Now, 6.30 on WKYT This Morning, boaters find a body in a Madison County Creek. And now investigators this morning are trying to figure out how the man died. A Lexington business owner has a huge mess to clean up after an early morning break-in. People across the bluegrass bracing for another round of potentially strong storms. And we're looking for that severe weather potential later on this afternoon and off into the nighttime hours. When does it start? When does it finish? And what can you expect? I'll have all those answers coming up next. Tracking, alerting, protecting. This is WKYT This Morning. Good morning. It's Thursday, April 9th. We're delighted you're with us on WKYT this morning. I'm Bill Bryant. And I'm Rebecca Smith. We've been dealing with these storms and the rain all week long, and the severe weather threat continues today. Right. We have declared a first alert severe weather day ahead of potentially damaging storms. WKYT meteorologist Micah Harris tracking the threat in our first alert weather center. Micah. Well, we're looking outside and seeing those temperatures in the 60s. Really high temperatures today, right around 80 degrees this afternoon. Muggy conditions that does not feel like April. April typically sitting there in the mid 60s. Nothing going on this morning, and I don't see anything that'll affect your morning. But really, that piece of energy continues to slide toward the northeast. Look at this little spin in the atmosphere. This is your first impulse or along this boundary that will slide on in and that will give us that opportunity at strong and severe storms. Your best chance at the start time, remember, start time of these. 2 to 5 p.m. And then it actually continues to go through the evening and off into the nighttime hours. We'll talk about the effects of this because we're looking at all severe weather threats as a possibility with that flash flood watch coming up in about 10 minutes. All right, we'll see you then. Thank you. With storms on the way, some folks are still cleaning up from the last round of severe weather. And if you're going to be outside today, be prepared to move indoors quickly. Keep your eye to the sky. We talked to several people who are making plans to try to stay safe ahead of today's storms. Let's go to WKYT's Hillary Thornton. To continue our weather team coverage live in Scott County. Good morning, Hillary. Good morning. The water has gone down here where we are in the parking lot of the Arby's in Georgetown that sits right next to the Elkhorn Creek. However, the parking lot was covered in water and actually caused some damage inside the restaurant. Now, all you can see is the mud left behind and this debris stuck in the fence. And that same problem occurred in several areas around town, including neighborhoods. Many people living here say it seems like it has been nearly a week of constant rainfall, and they are now making sure they are prepared if it happens again. Homeowners who have already been the victim of flooding once in just the past few days took precautions before yesterday's rain arrived. We move our vehicles first thing we do, get the vehicles out of here and put them up at Kmart, put everything up high. Now, some here say with all of the worry and stress that comes along with these flooding issues with all of the recent rain, they are now considering moving. Live in Georgetown, Hillary Thornton, WKYT. All right, Hillary, thank you very much. And today's storms could produce damaging hail as well. That's what caused an Eastern Kentucky elementary school to have to dismiss early yesterday. Large hail caused damage in Johnson County. The hail cracked a window in the library of the Flat Gap Elementary School. Some people around Johnson County also reported damage to their cars. No injuries were reported from the storm. It's not just the bluegrass dealing with severe weather. Forecasters are warning of large hail, damaging winds, possibly tornadoes today across the Midwest. Several tornadoes were reported yesterday, mostly in rural areas of Kansas and Oklahoma. Emergency managers are telling people to get ready to take shelter if bad weather approaches. And we're going to help you if severe weather approaches with more rain and storms in the forecast. Stay with us for the latest weather updates. You can download the WKYT First Alert Defender radar app for your iPad or smartphone. Go to WKYT.com for the latest information. Right now, 634 on WKYT this Thursday morning. And we're following up on a developing news out of Madison County where a man's body has been pulled from a creek. State police say people canoeing spotted the body last night near Will Green Lake just outside of Richmond. WKYT's Mark Barber is at our live desk now to explain what we know at this point, but there's still a lot of questions. Mark, good morning. That's exactly right, Bill. And in fact, investigators tell us there are more questions than answers in this case. State police say that the man's body was found in a creek below Will Green Lake around 7.30 last night when two people who were out in a canoe spotted the body. 
Investigators tell us they are still working to figure out how long the body was in the creek. They don't think it showed up yesterday. Instead, state troopers think it was in the water for a while. The body is being taken to the medical examiner's office in Frankfurt for an autopsy. Investigators are hoping to learn more about the man's death today. As we continue on and, and we can learn exactly what happened and, and, and what kind of injuries, if he had any injuries, what may have caused his death, uh, that'll be what actually takes the course of our investigation. For now, investigators say they are still trying to figure out who the man is, if foul play was involved in his death, when he died, and how his body ended up in the creek. From the live desk, Mark Barber, WKYT. All right, we'll stay on top of it. Thank you very much, Mark. And new this morning, police are investigating a break in at a Lexington gas station. Happened just a little bit ago at about 5 o'clock this morning at the BP on Georgetown Road near the Scott County line. Police say a man wearing gloves used a crowbar to pry open a window and that caused it to shatter out. He then went inside, stole cigarettes. A similar crime happened at that same gas station just a little while ago. No arrests have been made in either case. One of two escaped inmates from Wolf County is back in custody. State police say John Trent was arrested last night in Powell County, but his cousin Dallas Trent is still on the run. The two were originally arrested on robbery charges two weeks ago. Police say they jumped out of a transport van while in Lee County. The search continues this morning for a fugitive in Lincoln County. The sheriff's office says James Blakely is considered dangerous. They say he threatened deputies before running into the woods near Efusius School Road. Blakey is wanted on felony warrants. This morning, we're hearing from a group of teenagers who rushed in to help a family while camping. Last week's storms toppled a tree that fell onto a Lexington family's tent at Natural Bridge. Catherine Carlson died, and her husband was badly hurt. And a group of young campers nearby saw what was happening and ran over to help the couple and their three children. The teens helped get the tree off of the tent and stayed with those children until other family members showed up. They say they did what anyone else would have done. You can't complain about the fact that it's pouring rain and your feet are sloshy and gushy. You, you can't just be like, oh, there's blood. I, I can't touch it. I'm afraid. You have to be there and you have to actually help or else nothing's going to get accomplished. Funeral arrangements are still pending for Katherine Carlson. Her husband, Brian, remains in serious condition at UK Hospital. He has been upgraded from critical to serious. Their three children were not hurt. 637 is the time. We've learned no one will be charged for a bar fight in Richmond that involved two college football teams. Richmond police say the Madison County Grand Jury decided not to indict anyone. Family members say EKU football player Colton Scurry was injured during the fight at Jersey's in January. Police say the fight involved students and football players, both from EKU and the University of Kentucky. And speaking of University of Kentucky, today we will find out which Kentucky basketball player, players are leaving. A lot of people curious about yeah. what's going to happen. Coach John Calipari has said he thinks at least five players will enter the NBA draft. WKYT's Brian Milam is joining us now with a preview of what's expected to happen later today. Brian. Good morning, everybody. It's decision day. John Calipari has met with his players over the last few days, and decisions on their future have now been made. The announcements will come at the Joe Craft Center this afternoon at 2.30. Calipari said Monday as many as seven could be gone. Yesterday, there were a couple of reports that the Harrison twins, Aaron and Andrew, are heading to the draft. Junior Willie Cauley-Stein, freshman Carl Anthony Towns, pretty much considered locks to leave. Willie said he was likely gone after losing to Wisconsin. Towns could end up being the number one overall pick in the June draft. Freshman Trey Lyles and Devin Booker, they are first round picks in mock drafts as well, so it seems likely they could be leaving. And according to reports surfacing over the last day and a half or so, sophomore Dakari Johnson has made the decision to hire an agent and also enter the draft, although his mother told WKYT yesterday he's still gathering information. We will bring it to you today on CW Lexington live coverage beginning at 2. 2 o'clock, the announcement from the players at the Joe Craft Center will start somewhere around 2.30. So we will find out who's staying and who's going. Odds are it could be 7 for 7 that the Cats are going to the NBA draft. We'll have much more later on. Back to you.
All right, Brian, thank you again. Two o'clock on that special report on the CW Lexington. Well, it turns out that most of the people arrested in Lexington during UK's run in the NCAA tournament were not students. 69 people were arrested in three nights of post game revelry. A lot of those arrests came from the off campus area around State Street. A UK spokesperson says only seven of those arrested are UK students. Most of the people arrested were charged with alcohol intoxication or dis disorderly conduct. Woo, it was a mess down there. <laughs> so there were 62 <laughs> others, if the, <laughs> you do the math, right? All right, uh, who let's were in trouble there. See if the roads are a little more quiet than that. I would imagine so on an early Thursday morning with Officer Don, who's here. Yeah, let's check in with him for live drive traffic. Good morning. Yeah, no problems on State Street right now. And uh, inbound, inbound South Lime looks good past campus. Uh, we're also looking at the north side of town where earlier and a report of a non injury collision turned out that it was just a fender bender at North Broadway in the circle. So all lanes are going to remain open there. Let's get a look outside, give you an idea of what's happening as you get ready to head out this morning. Just some wet roads to deal with a little, little bit. But other than that, Broadway and High Street's moving well on our Waze map. We're monitoring the construction zone on the inner and outer loops of New Circle Road. Uh, that's, of course, between Versailles Road. In Leestown, and we're not seeing any major slowdowns there just yet. So we'll keep an eye on that throughout the morning. And Nicholasville and Man of War, where for the moment traffic's moving through with just one cycle of the light to clear that big intersection. Uh, we'll keep you up to date. Now back to you. All right, pretty good start to the day. We'll be watching that weather carefully this afternoon for uh, evening commuters, certainly. More news coming up on WKYT on your Thursday morning. The hunter becomes the hunted, and beachgoers there to capture it all on camera. We'll talk about uh, snapping this wild moment coming up after weather. Yeah, we have some nasty weather on the way as this piece of energy really starts to ramp up back toward the west. Heading our way, when do you expect this and also the effects out of this? I'll have all those answers coming up next.